In a previous video, we talked about creating a keyword match activity uh, that was Flash-based. And the difference between the Flash-based version and the version I'm going to show you as a page now is that the Flash-based version uses up a little bit more memory in the Smart Notebook file. Um, and sometimes if you have multiple Flash-based activities in the same Smart Notebook lesson, it takes a little bit longer to load and can kind of gum up your computer a little bit. So if you're looking for uh, an alternative to using Flash-based, um, here is that um, alternative. To show you what the Flash-based one looks like real quick while it loads as compared to what the page one is going to look like, if we go to our activities again and we choose keyword match, you'll see as it loads, it loads the little smart notebook guy. Now, to load the keyword match non-Flash-based, we choose less activity toolkit, pages, lesson pages, and then we want keyword match. And then we choose keyword match. Now the difference between this one and the other one, the flash-based activity, is the flash-based activity again was blank. Everything on this page you can change. Um, to make your changes, you just simply double-click on the text box and you can change it. For this activity, we are going to change this from sort the keywords to sort the state capitals. And if we want to make this a little bit longer, we can pull this longer. We can highlight and change our size at the top to be 48 if we want. There we go. We can move this around to anywhere that we want it to go. The way that this works is let's pick our state capitals. So let's just go down the list. Start in the M's. Now, to get this, to get a copy of this, we can choose this and we can clone, or we can simply go up to our text on the toolbar and tap. But if we do that, then we don't get the same orange color or the same font. So I don't want to do that. I just want to keep um, changing the same text box that we're using. So I'm just going to clone this again. If you want to do it on your keyboard, it's just control D and it'll just keep making them. So we'll do five quick ones here. Double click to touch our text again. Now the difference with this one is opposed to the flash base activity is you're going to have to move everything around. So this you're really only going to be able to do this once and then the kids are going to know which order everything goes in. You can move them around and put them in any order you want. If you want the um, text to line up, you see how you're, I'm getting the red lines? That is under View and Alignment, and you can show active guides or guides for active objects. If you want to add that to your toolbar, you right-click on the toolbar, and it's under your Show or Hide Alignment Lines. And we can just throw that right in there and click Done. And then when we click on it, then we get that same box. So for my purposes, I'm just going to line these all up. Because um, I'd like to do that. I can put them in any order I want. There we go. All right. So now, your label is going to be infinitely cloned. See this little infinity sign here? So we have five descriptions that we need. So I'm just going to pull the label to make four labels. And then the last one, I'm going to right click and I'm going to uncheck the infinite cloner. And now that is its own little label. Okay? So now I need to change these labels. So I double click on them to access the text box. And then I do that for all the other ones to make sure that I can access all of the text. When I'm done, with all of the labels, then I can move them to where I want. Okay, so I have all of my labels here now, and I can arrange them to be where I want them. If you don't want them in alphabetical order, you can simply just move them around a little bit more, make it more difficult for people to figure out where everything's going. Okay. Now one thing that you would want to do to give the kids access to the answers is you can select all of the labels, clone them, and then
and put them in the correct order. So we'll line them up with the words here. Uh, here we go. And then you can move your little question mark over. You choose the question mark. I hold control. Select all of the other ones together. Group them. Actually, before I do that, I want to move this a little bit farther off the page so that when I move my labels, they don't show up. So I group them, and then I move this off the page. All right. I'm also going to change this to lock and allow to move so that when I move it, I don't get that text box look around it. All right. Now, the rest of the things on the page, I want to highlight like this. And I want to, well, first of all, I want these here to lock in place. I do not want the kids to be able to move them. So now the kids can't move them. I can't even really select and do anything with them. If you need to access them again, you can right click on them and then you have the ability to unlock it. These down here, I want to lock and I want to allow them to move. And what that's going to do is if the kids double click on here, they can't access the text box or sometimes the kids will double tap unintentionally on the smart board. But now, kids can just move these anywhere that they want on the screen. I'm going to choose my alignment tools. I'm going to take off the show grid for active objects. And now as the kids move them around, they can move them to the places that they think maybe are right. And then when they slide these in, there you go. Now you, the kids can actually see the answers there on the side. You can move these down and put them back. And then the, you can have the kids try again. But again, it doesn't reset the page and change everything like the flash base activity did. However, this gives you a little bit more flexibility and doesn't take up as much space on your computer or within the Smart Notebook file.